Hey guys, this is Chris from Mixdown.online. I hope you're doing good. Now, today I want to share with you my thoughts on gain staging. Uh, this is probably something you've uh, you've heard before or you've probably seen on YouTube, but I want to give you my spin on it and how I uh, work this out in my mixes uh, working in Cubase and maybe tips for other DAW. So when I first started mixing, uh, that was like... 14 years ago or something, um, that was one of the biggest mistake I did uh, at the time. Uh, I was recording my signal way too hot. Uh, but I thought that, you know, recording a hot signal was the best uh, thing to do. You know, it sounded better if you were recording hot and, you know, you were avoiding having uh, too much of a uh, noise floor. Um, the problem was that when I was starting mixing, uh, my master bus was overload. So I always had a problem with the master bus. Um, so it was always a battle. Um, so in the end, I was just bringing down the master bus before sending that to mastering. So it was kind of a mess. When I realized that I, I didn't need to record that hot, I was like, wow, okay, this is going to help me a lot, you know? Um, so what I do now is I record my signal uh, pretty low. Um, almost around minus 18 dBFS. So why minus 18 dBFS? Uh, the reason why is very simple. Um, minus 18 dBFS is the equivalent of zero VU. So if we go back in time, uh, the, in the analog recording days, um, we used to record on tape through large consoles um, and we we actually reference our dbs with vus uh, so uh, basically zero vu was the sweet spot um, and it's still the sweet spot when you're using a vu meter with all these machines you know consoles uh, tape recorders and stuff um, a lot of noise was uh, was adding up so if we um, if we recorded too low, we were stuck with that noise. And when we went above that zero VU sweet spot, uh, we we got that kind of warm feel because uh, in the analog world, when you go past the zero VU, you're not gonna get like crazy uh, clipping, you're going to get more of a kind of a warm saturation, which is compression, um, which sounds pretty nice and warm. But now in the digital world, it's quite different. Um, we have our converters that converts the analog signal into digital. Uh, and now with the 24-bit uh, and even 32-bit floating point uh, recording uh, resolution, uh, the dynamic range is quite large. So it's going to be hard for you to get some noise if you record at minus 18 or even minus 20 uh, dBFS. Uh, but if you go past 0 dBFS, you're done, it's over, it's clipping. So there's no such thing as um, saturation and natural compression if you go past the zero dBFS because uh, it's digital. So in Cubase, what I have uh, set up is pretty cool. It's on my, uh, my mixer. If I go into the preferences, I have access here to the colors of uh, the mixer uh, meters. Uh, which is quite cool because I can select the color I want. So what I did is I selected the uh, blue tone up to minus 18 dBFS. So then I know when my recordings goes above minus 18 dBFS. So uh, then what I, what I did was I, I set up another color. So I have my buffer zone, uh, which is my save zone, basically, uh, that is purple that goes up to minus 10 dBFS, and then there's the red zone where I just don't want to go. Um, so what it does visually is this. So let's not forget that everything adds up in the end. So if I focus on my master bus, um, and click on play, you'll see that even if there's, uh, th that most of the, the tracks are at uh, minus 18 dBFS, 
uh, everything is still adding on the master bus and my master bus I think goes uh, up to minus 3.8 um, which is a bit too high right now so you know what, what I do is once I have my recording done and I'm ready to start mixing I just go over my tracks and I um, and I t tone down a bit the gain on the, the track that I think might be too loud so in Cubase the good thing is we have a pre-gain option uh, which is pretty cool you can find that pre-gain option in the pre section of the uh, mixing console if you don't see it just click on racks and make sure the pre is activated um, so you can uh, select uh, your uh, the amount of gain you want to uh, you want to get out or you want to add up it's up to you uh, but in our case we're just going to remove a few dbs so that's one way of doing it uh, the other way of reaching that gain knob that pre-gain uh, is if you click right here in the edit channel settings uh, you'll see the uh, the pre-gain knob right here okay so let's bring that down a few dbs I'm, I'm, I'm going to do the same with the room, the far room mics. Let me check if there's something else. I'm not going to play with the group or buses right now. Oh, I have these guitars that I think are might be a bit too, too loud. So uh, another way I can reduce my gain is just to select the track, the segments, and bring down the segments. A few dbs so that can work as well so um, if you're for example if you don't have a pre-gain um, section on your in your daw uh, you can you can actually uh, trim that down trim your your waves directly uh, through the segment uh, you can do that in pro tools 11 and 12 i believe uh, as far as logic i'm not sure you have that option uh, but for these for Studio One, I'm not sure as well. So you tell me if there's some Studio One users, let me know if you have access to that kind of option. But I know that Cubase has, uh, you have access with Cubase and same for Pro Tools 11 and up. So if you don't have access to a pre-gain option in your DAW, or you can't uh, lower your, your gain through lowering the segments, you can actually use trim plugins. Um, through your regular plugins, uh, sometimes you have access to a trim, uh, like a, uh, a channel strip, for example. You can have a trim option, uh, or you can use a free trim uh, plugin, uh, like, for example, the Blue Cat has one that is, that is okay, that you can use for free. And I'm going to leave in the description below the link for you to download this free plugin. So this is basically just a trim to lower or um, adding a, a bit more gain. So that is the way to do it if you want to have a free option. So what I do after is I select all of my audio tracks and uh, without the group and um, effects channels, which I'm going to unselect right now. Um, so by having these audio tracks selected, I make sure my Q link in Cubase uh, is activated and I just lower these faders down a bit, maybe by one or two dBs, uh, just to give me a bit more headroom to start my mix. Um, so let's listen to what it does. So that's pretty cool. So now on my master bus, I'm uh, peaking at minus 9.2. So that gives me a very good start point uh, to start the mix. And going through my mix, I'm going to add plugins um, and play with my levels and stuff. So that uh, that peak level is going to is going to come up. And my goal with the master bus is to to keep the master bus at unity point at zero. And I want to end my mix at around five uh, minus five to minus three dBs. So it's ready to send to mastering. So. Uh, every time you send your mix to mastering, make sure you're at around that level. So around minus 3 dBs to minus 5 dBs, and your mastering engineer is going to love you. So some would say that instead of gang staging everything, you could only bring your master fader down, and that's it, problem solved. 
I would be careful with that uh, just because of the plugins. A lot of plugins uh, don't react very well with hot signals. Um, just take, uh, take for example, um, all these uh, analog gear emulations like tape emulations, uh, console emulations, and all these, uh, these old compressors uh, emulating to plugins. Um, what they do when they emulate uh, a, an analog unit they actually emulate the entire way the analog unit works. So if it's well done, uh, that unit is gonna is gonna react well around the sweet spot of zero VU, which is around minus 18 uh, dBFS in digital. So if you want to keep the plugins at their best, uh, keep it low, keep it at minus 18, minus 15 in this uh, in that area, um, and keep your master fader at zero at unity point. And, um, and there you go. So this is it for today. Don't forget to share and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below or go on my website at mixdown.online. Get on my mailing list. You'll have access to a lot of free stuff like multi-track sessions for you to mix, uh, ebook, um, a free tutorial video. So until next time, see you.